my mom used to always tell us if you lay with dogs, you're going to get fleas, you know, and that that's just the way it works, man. But, you know, if you lay with like-minded professionals, not literally, guys, I can hear y'all laughing and getting ready to blow me up. So you always want to hang out with people that are a little better and smarter than you are because it doesn't do any good to go backwards. So I got a text this morning from a gentleman, and he he was talking about, he said he got a request from an apartment complex that was reaching out to him saying that they wanted him to take care of their property next year. And, And when they start off with that, you guys tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, you won't you won't hurt my feelings with this, but how many times? What I really want to know is, and because they they really do tell that, hey, we'd like you to take care of our property. Do they have a class or something that these property managers go to that they say, hey, when you call for a landscape contractor, be sure to you know say, hey, we'd like you to take care of our property next year for us, or you know this summer or whatever, where, whatever time they're, they're calling you. It's like they're kind of luring us in is the way I see it. They try to lure you in with like, okay, well, man, we've heard you do good work, and they, they lay the foundation, and it makes you feel warm and cozy and all fuzzy inside. And the reality of it is they're really just wanting a proposal for service in most cases. Now, sometimes it's legitimate where they, you know, they're tired of fooling with somebody else that's not showing up. They're blowing grass all over the place or they got weeds all over the place or, you know, their irrigation system, the zones are screwed up and not working right and they can't get them out there to fix it there. So there are sometimes underlying or mitigating circumstances with that. But the foundation in which they reel us in to get us out there Sometimes it it almost makes me want to think if, you know, what's really going on, you know? So, you know, ask yourself when you get that message or you get that email or you get that phone call, does sometimes, and I know this this time of the year, it's not an emergency for them to, to have you come out and talk to them. But it's also like a lot of times they want to, hey, I need this by tomorrow or I need this by, you know, and they fill in the blank. You know, it's two days, three days. And and in my mind, I I get to thinking that, okay, your lack of planning doesn't constitute my emergency. You know, and it's not that you don't want to look at it because there's different ways we can look at it, you know, especially from a sales standpoint that, okay, strike while the iron's hot, right? And, you know, if you can get out there, get out there and take care of it right away. But if you can't, you know, the other side of it says, if you can't, you can't, you know. So here's where, here's where I want to go with that because I, 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 I can feel you wondering, you know, hey, where the hell are you going with this, Wayne? First, I think we got to understand that we got to be able to, for ourselves, decide what type of – person, business, whatever, do we want to service? You know, stay inside your lane. You know, if commercial work in this particular case, this guy really wasn't fired up about doing a lot of commercial work. Hey, if just because they tell you, hey, I want you to do the work and I know you do a good job, unless that's an opportunity that you're looking for, right? If you had one chance, one opportunity, would you take it or are you going to let it slip away? You know, if you don't want to do commercial work, then you don't do commercial work. Or if you don't want to do residential work, hey, you don't do residential work. I was talking to a guy the other day. I was at a uh, training class, and he was saying, you know, I, I really think I'm getting out of residential co- completely. And, hey, more power to you. You know, if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I know uh, we're we're not doing a whole lot of residential mowing like we used to. We still do some. We still subcontract quite a bit of that out. We've got three or four guys that do our, our residential mowing, uh, subcontractors that we've uh, hired to do that for us. But, and we still do some in-house. But my point is, and that's another story for another day, but my point is, you know, stay in your lane. And what I mean by staying in your lane is trust your gut. 
If you know you don't want that type of work, then don't do it. But if it's something that you can look at and say, hey, maybe that's a new opportunity, you know, for you. Maybe you're in doing something that, hey, maybe up to this point you've been doing all residential and you're thinking, man, I'd like to do some commercial work maybe, but I don't know if I want to get into the, the hustle and bustle and the bidding that goes along with the, the commercial work. And, you know, because there is a very literal loyalty in a lot of cases uh, in that. And I say that with all due respect. I mean, we, I've got customers that we've had for many, many years. But on the other hand, a lot of times that becomes a numbers game. Especially as we're creeping into a an economy that we've got, that we're creeping in on. You know, which, you know, we got inflation rates going up. There's probably going to be some people losing their jobs as this goes along. And we all, that if you've been through it, you know, here's what's going to happen. I can tell you what's going to happen because I've been through a few of them, literally. You know, in the 43 years we've been in business, some are going to survive and some aren't. Companies I'm talking about. The companies that are going to survive are the companies that do a few things. And, I mean, we're not going to get that deep into it today, but I'll just to highlight them a little bit and we'll bring it back on another show. And I don't know if this is an oxymoron or if this is the right way of even saying this, but... Sometimes staying in your lane is redefining the lane that you need to be in. Sometimes staying in the lane, in in your lane, is redefining the lane you should be in. So maybe it's getting in a new lane is the opportunity. And I'm not saying going from residential to commercial or commercial to residential. I'm just, you know, or, or high maintenance versus low maintenance or no, no other consideration. And there's a million variables, a million variables that can come into play. But I'm just saying I would certainly suggest that you consider looking at what you're doing and how you're doing it and asking yourself, is that the most efficient and most profitable thing that we can do? And when I say we, I mean you and your business, whether it's a one truck operation or a multi-crew company, it doesn't matter. Because what I caught myself doing early on in my business was I caught myself jumping lanes way too frequently, way too frequently. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be diversified or you shouldn't change lanes because I just said sometimes we got to change lanes. But I want you to visualize in your mind for a second a, a track, a race track where, you know, runners get on like in the Olympics or whatnot, high school, a high school track where you got lanes running around them. You know, and you got these lanes marked off. Well, some days Wayne would get up and Wayne would be in the inside lane and sometimes Wayne would be in the outside lane and sometimes Wayne would be running around that track. I don't know, I want you, if if you're not driving, do this for me. Open your arms wide up, open. Take your left arm, put it left, your right arm, put it right. Come on, just play along, do it for me. Come on, open your arms up. Make like a cup. Like a, or a snow plow, right? You're wide open like a snow plow. And here's the truth bomb. Don't run around the track with your arms wide open trying to be everything to everybody because that will put you right out of business. And that, my friends, is my truth bomb of the day. And we're going to talk about that. Because when you run around with your arms wide open, trying to be everything to everybody, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? I'll tell you what it meant for me. I don't know what it means for you, but I can tell you what it meant for me is that 
when I hopped up in the morning and, and some mornings I was on that inside lane and some mornings I was on the outside lane and sometimes I was in the middle lane and, you know, I don't know how many tracks there are or how many lanes there are going around a, a track, but there's probably five or six lanes and you got your arms wide open. Here I go. I'm running around that track with my arms wide open, trying to be everything from the little old lady on Social Security to the Humana corporations of the world and everybody in between. But the problem that that caused for me and my business was since I was trying to be everything to everybody, I was nothing to nobody. Yes, I had customers. Yes, I had loyal customers. But I hadn't defined who I was. 